What's going on, everybody? It's your boy C4 here today. We're going to talk about awards. It's not going to be, you know, a hot take. It's not going to be something ripping on the Eagles. It's just a highly debatable topic around this time of year is that who should win the MVP as well as we'll, we'll talk about every other award just to get it all done in one video. But the, the finale of this video will be my choice for NFL MVP for this 2016 2017 season. As so always, let me know in the comment section below before we jump right in who you guys think should win the MVP. In your honest opinion, without further ado, uh, we did a predictions video way, way, way back. I think maybe in July, July, August, somewhere around then. Maybe I don't think the preseason had finished. Uh, where I just m basically predicted everything. I predicted who's going to win the divisions, who's going to the wild card, uh, all the award winners, college football. Uh, now I'm going to make you know kind of a cheap adjustment and really this late into the season for both college and pro uh hit you with what's gonna happen so first like i said mvp will be the, the last talking point let's talk about the division so afc east it's gonna go to the patriots that's pretty much already a lock uh afc north really a battle between the pittsburgh steelers and the baltimore ravens but i think that steelers offense has the longevity to get it done steelers win the nfc north uh the south and the West in the AFC still are up for grabs. Uh, the South, it's really, I think the Colts are still technically have a chance, but it's going to come down to between uh, the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans. And I think the Titans are a very solid team. I think they're a team that could make a somewhat legit playoff run because that's how they were built. They have solid defense and a run-first offense, a power run offense, an old-school, you know, Bill Cowher-esque Pittsburgh Steelers offense. I think the Titans, looking at the strength of the schedule over the remaining games, and you, just, you can't bet on Brock Osweiler. He's horrible. Uh, I'm going with the Titans to win the AFC South. And for the West, as much as I would like the Oakland Raiders, I think the Chiefs have the tiebreakers. And I think looking at the remaining strength of schedule, I think the Chiefs have a little bit more favorable matchups. So I can see the Chiefs winning the AFC West. My two wildcard teams both stay in the West. Wildcard one will be the Oakland Raiders, and wildcard two will be the Denver Broncos. That is the most competitive division. I think the I like the you know I like to gloat about my a NFC East, but I think the AFC West is the clear number one division in football with the uh, NFC East coming number two this year. I think the Oakland Raiders and the Denver Broncos get both of those wildcard spots. I think you know Dolphins are there, but without Ryan Tannehill, as much as I want to shit on Ryan Tannehill for being an average quarterback. Him not being there is going to affect them. They get the Baltimore Ravens have a chance. I think that's really it. I think everyone else is pretty much out of contention. And the Ravens got to still today, before as I'm recording this, they still have to play the New England Patriots on Monday night. Uh, that could, if they beat the Patriots, hell, they might have to readjust this thing. But I don't think they're going to beat the Patriots. Um, so looking at the NFC, the East already locked up by Dallas. Uh, the North pretty much locked up by Detroit, unless they have a complete just falling apart on. I don't know what what levels. I can't remember a team that's fallen apart like that ever. Like a Dallas or something. Um, the South is still somewhat up for grabs. And this is where I actually feel kind of smart because I said Tampa was going to be a legit team this year. And people are kind of like, Tampa Bay, really? But I think Atlanta holds on. I think their defense is finally starting to click. And everyone knows that they have... Um, Everyone knows that they have one of the best offenses in the NFL. So I think Atlanta holds on to win the South. And then the West, even though Russell Wilson just threw five picks this week, I think Seattle, uh, everyone else in the West sucks this year. How the times have changed forever. It was the East, NFC East was the best. And then over the last three to four years, the West was the best because, I mean, how many years uh, of getting high first-round draft picks until everyone's competitive there? And now everything's kind of regulated himself with the East being the dominant division in the NFC and the West being the, ugh, I don't want to watch that, which sucks for our schedules because a lot of the, the primetime games, they featured a lot of the West teams because they thought they'd be decent this year. Well, at least next year, 2017, 2018, we'll get a lot more, you know, Eagles games so I don't have to fucking live stream them. Uh, but now for the wildcard teams in the NFC, I think wildcard one goes to the Bucks. I think the, over the remaining schedule, the Bucks may have the easiest schedule in the NFL, I think, for a playoff contending team. I mean, for fantasy schedule, James Winston, if you got him, you might want to look at playing him. And for wildcard two, I think it will go to the New York Giants. Um, unless the NFL is biased, as much as I don't want to put on my tinfoil hat, I could, you know, I could see them somehow trying to get Green Bay in. You know, that seems like Green Bay's getting lots of favorable calls, and that, that, that makes a lot of money for the league, seeing Aaron Rodgers um, and the Green Bay Packers are a popular team. Uh, but I think the Giants do hold on. I think Aaron Rodgers is a little bit banged up. They're not getting a fully health one. And that's more so Giants already have the wins in the spot. They have two more wins than the Packers already. So, like, they already have them on the board. They need New York to lose out, and Green Bay has to win. And that's just a little too many things to happen for me. Uh, even though the Packers' strength of schedule is not incredibly difficult, and it wouldn't be absurd to think that they couldn't win out. But I think the the bigger unlikelihood is the New York Giants 
Thank you for beating Dallas, by the way, uh, losing out. So that is my prediction. I'm not going to do a Super Bowl prediction. I'll do a playoff prediction video uh, later on, and we'll get that talk going. But now it's for the award winners. Actually, no, fuck that. Before we go to the award winners, let's go to college football since we're talking just about teams. So it's Alabama versus Washington. I love that I called Washington was going to be my sleeper team this year. And the very go back, it's one of the best videos that I've had. It's up there with when I said Stefan Diggs was going to be really, really good in the NFL. I said Washington. I said the top ten teams in college football, and I had Washington on that list. I said, "Watch for Washington. They're going to be a goddamn beast in the Pac-12." Everyone's like, "Oh my God, you forgot Florida State. Oh my God, this and that. If Washington sucks, ha ha ha." But the day it ends there. Alabama is the best team in college football this year, unfortunately. As much as I hate Alabama, despise Alabama, hate Nick Saban, despise Lane Kiffin, they're the best team. They're gonna they're gonna roll over Washington. Uh, Clemson versus Ohio State is going to be the really, really close matchup. I can see Ohio State getting in just because maybe it's biased. Maybe they're getting some, uh, you know, Green Bay Packer bias, if you will. And I'm not, I don't even hate the Packers. I don't know why I'm saying all that shit about the Packers. But, I mean, Penn State should have got in. Ohio State definitely should not have got in the college football. That's another time for another video. But I just think Penn State got absolutely robbed. And Ohio State just got in on name value alone. So, because of that, I'm going Clemson. I think Deshaun Watson has a final breakout, you know, this is my sending off game before he goes to the pros and uh, gets them to the championship where it's going to be Alabama versus Clemson. Alabama's winning. I don't. I actually think Alabama is going to crush both teams. SEC, maybe call it my SEC bias, but I think, I mean, Washington, Clemson, Ohio State, they don't play defense. Ohio State played Michigan. They struggled, okay? When you got a defense like Alabama, there's no real like, – Michigan's probably the only other team. In the, in the entire college football system that has a similarly styled team to Alabama. And that's the, even them. They're not as good as Alabama. So as many problems as Michigan has been able to pose against a lot of these teams, Alabama's just that much better. And I think Alabama's going to just walk through both these games and unfortunately win a title. Ew! I, 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 just still, I still can't believe how uh, Nick Saban can do this year after year. It's absolutely incredible that Nick Saban can have that competitive a team with all those five-star recruits. Pretty much every player that plays for him is a five-star high school recruit. I don't know how he does it. Simply amazing the work he does. Anyways, moving on to the award winners. We got Offensive Player of the Year. I think it's going to go to Matt Ryan. While I think David Johnson deserves it more, they usually give it to the quarterback in these situations, and they'll give it to Matt DeIce. Um, you know, I had a hot take where I said he was the most overrated player in the NFL, and I still think if he can't get Atlanta at least into the championship game this year, He's still kind of overrated. You kind of what are you Peyton Manning 2.0? You can fucking pad your stats in the regular season, but can't do it in the playoffs. I don't hate Matt Ryan. I don't even really hate the Falcons, which is surprising because a lot of Eagle fans hate the Falcons. But you gotta win the playoffs. If not, you're just a fucking you're a regular season quarterback, which means you're overrated because you can't win when the time counts. So maybe that video uh, makes sense now. But he played he played great this year. I just think David Johnson is having an incredible year. It's only hurt because the Cardinals suck. I think David Johnson should win Offensive Player of the Year, but it'll go to Matt Ryan. Um, that's not the last we're going to talk about David Johnson, by the way. Uh, defensive Player of the Year, uh, it's, it's going to go Von Miller. He's the poster child. He got all those commercials for Madden. He's on all the TV shows. They're going to give it to Von Miller. While I think Khalil Mack deserves it more, I mean, Von Miller, 13 and a half sacks. I don't think he's... As influential as Khalil Mack has been this season, I don't think he has to be as good. He has a lot, much better surrounding cast around him on that Denver Broncos defense than Khalil, Khalil Mack does. But, you know, on the other side of the thing, Broncos offense sucks. That defense is on the field a lot of times. You know, Vaughn Miller's getting a lot of uh, a lot of snaps that he has to. That defense is what makes them win, whereas the Oakland Raiders, they have a great offense. Derek Carr and company. Um, I personally would give it to Khalil Mack, but it's going to be Vaughn Miller. Offensive Rookie of the Year is going to Ezekiel Elliott. Easy. It's not going to be Dak Prescott. It's going to be Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year. This was a little bit tougher. I think we'll go to Joey Bosa. He picked up a knock this week. I don't know if it's a long-term injury because if it is a long-term injury, it may hurt his effect. I think Deion Jones, the linebacker from Atlanta, has been very well. I'm not so sure about Jalen Ramsey, what his stat line's looking like. But it probably will go to Joey Bosa. I mean, he when he's been on there, I mean, the, the, the overall stats might be, not be there. He had a couple good sacks. But uh, just the pressures and stuff like that, the hurries, QB hurries, all those pro football focus measurements that they take into effect, I think Bosa will win that one. Uh, comeback player of the year was, that's kind of tough. There's a bunch of names there. You could have Melvin Gordon, even though he got hurt. You had DeMarco Murray, even though yeah, DeMarco Murray. Um, Jimmy Graham could be there. But I think they're going to give it to Jordy Nelson. He has 12 touchdowns on the year. I wouldn't be surprised to see him finish with the most receiving touchdowns in the league. And you got to give it to that. He's, he's, um, 
you know, I, th I think a lot of these awards, you have to kind of consider their public perception, not only to the general public, but to the rest of the league. And, you know, you get some guys like, um, who else was mentioned on this list? They had to fucking, I can't remember who it was. There's a couple, someone else was mentioned on these lists, and I was like, I don't think they're going to give it to him. He's had some off-field issues. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to Jordan Nelson. Coach of the year, Bill Belichick. Uh, the fact that he dominated the way he did without Tom Brady in the lineup, I think it has to go to him. I mean, you got J Jack Del Rio and Jason Garrett probably are, there's, there's a top three. But the, just the way Bill Belichick just dominated, absolutely just game by a game plan, just from a game plan, was able to win without Tom Brady. I think just everything about it, you know, that comes into the whole public perception. You know, are they going to kind of blacklist all New England Patriots from this list? I don't think so. I think Bill Belichick's going to walk away with this one. And then finally, let's talk about the MVP. My shortlist, as of right now, there's still three games to go. Tom Brady, Derek Carr. Ezekiel Elliott, Matt Ryan, and David Johnson. All these guys, great stats. Tom Brady missed the first four games. I think they the, the league may hold that against them, the whole suspension thing. But when he's been back, he's been lights out. Um, Derek Carr, I think Derek with Derek Carr, it's more so his stats have been great. Unfortunately, he has that finger injury. It looks like it's really affecting him, so it may hurt his overall stat line. I think he was on pace. He'd probably be, you know, top three stats in both touchdowns and yards and then his obviously his team's gonna be going to the playoffs whereas you know guys like uh drew Brees who has great stats kirk cousins has great stats those teams not necessarily going to the playoffs um you got ezekiel elliott i don't think they're gonna give him both offensive rookie of the year and mvp and i i think i always think uh, ezekiel Elliott's never gonna win mvp because it's gonna be that offensive line there's always gonna be the people like myself who firmly believe that he's a great player never gonna discredit that he's a great player but if he was on any other team with the, with that offensive line. Like, the offensive line deserves like a lot, a big chunk of his credit, enough so that you can't put all the MVP, you're the most valuable player, because from one guy for, for an offensive skill position, because everyone else makes you the best player, as opposed to, you know, Tom Brady. Pretty much, there's, there's no superstars there, and he's been performing. Robert kuski has been hurt. Um, no run, they literally have no name running backs. Garrett Blunt, pretty much no team wide. I mean, he went to free agency, no one signed him, came back to New England. Derek Carr got another guy. Um, pretty much growing as a team. Uh, you got Matt Ryan and David Johnson. Uh, Matt Ryan, great year. I think he's going to win Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, David Johnson, again, I think he should win Offensive Player. His stats are incredible, man. This guy's going to have a fucking... He's, gonna, he's probably going to finish with like 1,300 rush yards and 1,000 receiving yards. So overall, I think the MVP should go to David Johnson from the stats standpoint as much as... Like everyone keeps clamoring about Ezekiel Elliott. Look at David Johnson's stat line. It's absolutely incredible that guy is everything on that offense Larry Fitzgerald has been decent but I don't know I can't remember a I've seen a time where David John like fucking Marshall Falk well it might have been the last time you've seen numbers like this I mean Le'Veon Bell slowly creeping in but I think those four game three games that he missed is gonna affect his stat line I think they, personally I have David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell more valuable to their team than Ezekiel Elliott and maybe that's just my cowboy bias but all three of those guys are incredible running backs right now but who I would think will win the MVP, I can't give you a definitive answer. I think it will be who fin what team finishes with a better record, be it Tom Brady or Derek Carr. I think those are the two guys, and here's why. Brady's a front runner. Everyone thinks it's got to be Brady. The stat lines are there, but New England's probably got to win out at some point. They're, they just win a lot, but I think if there's a strong competitor for Brady, they're not going to give it to him just because of all the suspensions and the off-field and drama and all that shit. And with Derek Carr... Um, they need to. They need superstars in this league. They need to build up bigger names. The Tom Brady, Peyton Manning era is coming down. Aaron Rodgers had a down year. His superstardom is fading a little bit. He's still a big mega superstar, but it's starting to fade a little bit. He didn't have the best of years this year uh, in terms of wins and success. They need to build up new stars. You already know about Ezekiel Elliott. You already know about Dak Prescott. But who else is there? Derek Carr, he can be the next big superstar quarterback. You need that big money quarterback. It's in Oakland. It's not the greatest market to have, you know, that next big franchise guy. But the NFL needs to, you know, it's a business. At the end of the day, these awards are a business. And if they, they, Tom Brady's already there, what does an MVP do to Tom Brady? It only just makes more drama for the league to deal with. Like, oh my God, imagine if he wasn't suspended for all this bullshit. On and on and on. But if you give Derek Carr the MVP award, and he's, he's if like I said, I think whoever has a better record between Brady and Carr will win it. Carr has a shot to have the same record as the Patriots, the Raiders do. Um, now you have Derek Carr. Wow, this young quarterback. He's, he has a story. His brother was a bust. Now look at him. He's the MVP of the league. 
You know, he's the next big face of Oakland. They get a high-powered offense. They got Latavis Murray, Murray Cooper, Michael Crabtree, great offensive line. That's how you build stars. That's what makes and generates more money for the league, especially in that California market where all the other teams are kind of sucking this year. If you can get some guys to get by behind Derek Carr, he's a likable guy. Everything off the field, no issues, anything like that. Um, it just makes sense not only from he has he deserves it this year. I think he definitely deserves uh, MVP consideration. But from a financial and NFL league standpoint, I think it also makes a lot of sense. So that is my overall. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. Uh, I want to say it's going to be probably Brady if I had to put my money on it, but I do. I would like to see Derek Carr get it. So let me know what you guys think about all these awards. You guys can shoot off uh, in the comment section below what you think. But overall, who do you think will win the MVP this season? And uh, that does it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. Until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out.